All right, welcome everybody to Finance 445. We're in week three. You are up to date. Um, all the grading has been completed, so everything has been turned on time to this. So if there is anything that you need as far as information, questions that you might have, email um, so that we can get caught up and feel like we're on top of things and going to get the grade that we're hoping for from this class. The theme of the entire course on 445 is estate planning. Uh, everything that we've talked about to this point is about estate planning, an issue of estate planning. So I don't know that tonight we have a lot of new material. I'll get 35 questions that you'll have on the test. Uh, so 50 points, we're back to normal 50 point to be the 50 questions that you had last week on the midterm. Uh, I have changed the minimum page expectation on the end of the chapter. So uh, go ahead and, and response to the question, the situation, the financial week. Um, I've been pleased overall free posts in so I can give you full credit in future weeks. Uh, tonight, like I say, we've got to cover, uh, spend a good amount of time on the test to, to get you prepared with the information. I'm excited to uh, to get to this point in the class where we're over half. So we want to look at um, estate, estate taxes um, and how what's taxed and what. A gross estate, an adjusted gross estate, a taxable estate, and then items. So let's talk about some of this information here. You have your gross estate because... Your gross estate is every trust when you pass, okay? I know you can't read that very well. That's a nice long delay, so I can't even see what I'm writing. But that's supposed to say trust or estate, okay? This estate. Then you have, so you have things that are in a state. What would an example of something that's out of your estate? I didn't mean to draw. Um, but things like an irrevocable life insurance trust or islet is so that you're of your estate. If you own life insurance and its benefit is part of your estate, so you can see how that would act as you've got that certain threshold, right, that you've got a stable set up, there's a chance that the life insurance itself lets become an important financial planning tool that's out of the estate source to pay taxes when you pass away. Islet. Then there's just irrevocable, okay, irrevocable trust. Revocable trust. Those are ones that you have control over and still have ownership. Um, some management and some benefit from that chip of management or management. If it was if part of your estate, no matter what the trust is called, revocable or irrevocable, meaning you don't have control over where the money goes, going income stream from the trust as long as you're allowed on the trust or who's going to get the money when you pass. So if you give up incidents, another item that can be out of your CMA accounts, these are Unified Trust of Minor Act accounts. Okay, you also UGMA accounts, which are Gift to Minors Act. And the idea is that you give money to the, those funds are theirs and not yours and whatever's inside of the account and also control money retain no incidents of ownership as far as the ability to use. Okay, so because of that, it's out of your state. So in order to reduce your gross estate before you pass away. Of things that are in your estate, that's where we get to the, when we talk about the adjusted gross estate or expenses of the estate. Things, that's all taken out of the adjusted gross estate. Remember to your spouse, because spousal gifts, I put scout instead of spouse, is not allowing me to. Anyway, so you can give net estate or taxable estate. So final expenses, those are all written off. Uh, and then it also accounts for charitable gifts. Um, so there's all kinds of or create deductions from taxation or death as well. Spousal election is one of them, but all just against the total gross estate. Okay. Then after you've adjusted the gross estate, then you get to the tax point, $8 million, okay? And we know that this year, right? So that means you've got 0.37. So you're going to pay a 40% tax on that base, okay? Approximately, approximately $150,000 worth of tax. So over $100,000 in taxes before we passed away. Now, you also get to minus credit. Um, the unified tax credit, we've already tax credit now. It's just no matter during life or after three. And federal estate tax, successor trustee of the estate in some cases, is that you have two alternatives and some trusts, as an aside, will force the for six months. And the reason for that is because take the date of death as the step up or they can take exactly six months from date of death. So date of either the actual date of death or six months or the other. Later, why would that matter? Well, if the values of the accounts or the value of whatever the, then it would make sense to use um, well, just on behalf of the children. So when you transfer something, through, which is a value add or advantage to the individuals who are higher number. Uh, so you'll wait. If, if, however, your priority is to pay the least number three, if you wait six months, then you might wait of that alternative valuation date, which is the six months later or tips when it comes to uh, gross estate and that there's that six month rule, nine months to pay, six months to, to determine use date of death or, or that six month alternative date of death, alternative to the date of death. So those are some of the things I wanted to point out uh, when it comes to taxation.
So let's clear this page. And I think we've got a website to look at next. Nope, it was the book. Okay. Gross estate, like we talked about, you reduce it by, and then you get to the adjusted gross estate. Then after that gets you to your taxable estate. It gives you to a, a, a taxable rate the actual tax from. Okay. So the book gives you a little bit of... The thing I wanted to do was just make sure and review the key. If you've already read the chapter, you've already seen, but it's worth, you know, the, especially the final next week and some of the... Just the titling. And titling, of course, is very important when my spouse um, to uh, or all of my home ownership, then I would have her as a situation. You might not have rights or survivorship. And so because if it doesn't have rights or survivorship, then my fifth cent, it wouldn't necessarily go to the other owner. Okay, so those are different. Joint tenancy versus it's just an informal memorandum or letter that just talks about what in any number of things, where things should go, how a funeral should, all those kinds of things are can be put into a letter. It's legally binding. The executor has the right to make pre carried out, especially if they're crazy. Uh, those all trusts that you see out there are, are trusts actually written during life. Now, AFUST, and that then is not an interview's trust, is to, to liquidate and gather assets and liquidate. I confuse this with just a regular will. A living um, someone should be kept alive after they be away or less, uh, um, put the doctor, turn off the machine or keep it on. A lot of different states have their own form for a living will to make it easier. Times families fight over those objectives. You might have told a sibling that you want them to unhook you to accomplish that after you're gone, obviously, if not allow them to cut the cord or unplug the cord to the hospital. And then at that point, you can't do anything about it either. You determine medical directive. Usually in the case, um, you know, a situation where you won't recover, keep you alive as long as possible uh, or cut, you know, cut all. Uh, poor over will basically allows stuff to an existing living trust. So a poor over will just basically says, look, estate's just going to pour over into whomever else happened to you um, where they, you've got a trust, she's got a trust, something happens to you, everything's carried out the way it's supposed to. We'll then go through trust or the, the remaining spouse's trust by a person that can be transferred to death. So, so there are things that can't be transferred. There are things owned by a person that can be transferred to death. Probate against the state. We talked about how that's a public process. Even though probate, the reason probate exists against, you know, somebody else getting all the money or assets. The consequence of probate is, and maybe not an intent, you create a probate situation on your property or set up transfer on death of an estate that has to go through probate. But if you don't, and that's where the court decides, usually even if, if those two don't exist, um, and then give it to them, uh, which might not be what you go. Well, if you think about it, you know, do you want to be checked to the government or do you want to give most of your proceeds to grandchildren? And that's your choice. Probate many to person the past or as we call them, the decedent. That is that um, vocable living trusts and irrevocable trusts. We talked about change beneficiaries and change who's going to change who ultimately is going to benefit from the trust. You cannot risk trust is not a completed gift. So even if you say, well, I put my money, I don't have to tell Medicaid that I don't, that I have money. So my, it's my family's money. It's not my money. That would be to spend down your trust. It doesn't matter who the beneficiary is because that revocable trust you've retained is not a completed gift and it still is part of your, as far as Medicaid, I think it's an important attorney sometimes will do is they will seniors into a room, give them something nice to eat, like going to assisted living or if they had something significant medical, right? It would cost so much money. It's pretty easy to medical costs associated with their care, those medical expenses. Now, a lot of times they exaggerate trust planning or what we call Medicaid planning. Med Why is that? Because Medicaid planning is basically trying to, so that you can qualify for state help when it comes to, um, grandma has $500,000 in a bank account, grandkids, when you pass away, that 500000 can come to us, goes to an attorney, and the attorney says, oh yes, I can set you up with a trust. Well, a couple different things. First of all, there are now back in most states, goes back five years, sometimes as long as, they will go back as far as they need to go back to claw back assets and then cover the care. So one of the reasons they're so extreme, it's just a huge cost for each to themselves. So if you've got a whole population of people assets out of their state for the sole purpose of seriously and try to claw back those assets. Sink. That is that many of these seniors get children and we overlook the benefit to them. Well, let's take the, an assisted living facility. Medicaid, Medicaid will give you a certain threshold of care when it comes to it's unacceptable. Okay. Now, obviously, selves. however, that care is going to be the lowest quality of her life for herself, right? She didn't save it for her. If she's done that, it doesn't make sense. It's money to her grandkids irrevocably, so she can't even end up dictating for her where she gets to. She might be sharing a room for assisted living to a point where she might, to the point where she might be, it might take away in a nicer place with her money, right? Soon as she cannot take money out for assisted living at that point. In this case, Medicaid um, dictates do at this point. So if you ever hear an attorney's family members that's been trying to get grandma or mom and dad assisted living, um, perhaps a better way to care and priorities with the funds. If the priority with the funds is for the trust, also understand that there can be implicated government can come and claw it back if it's with in a certain amount. So that was kind of a, uh, a Tom, and it's less common now because like, as I mentioned before, if it's if it's marked, you will, uh, then it is illegal, okay? But there's supposed to understand 
that we need to have it, you know, 10 or 20 years down the road. You give up all, have no control over your own destiny when it comes to your health, significantly different than what you would have chosen with your own money. All right. Ownership, as we mentioned before, if you've got joint tenancy with right of assumes the share or percentage ownership, the joint tenancy with rights of survivorship of the property. If, if they die, I get 100% of the property or trust in place in order for joint to actually move to where it should. So the quiet wife, technically, if we're joint tenants with rights or survivor property, is that going to go through? Actually, it goes to her. She doesn't have, I don't have to have a benefit. But then when it's her property and, and she either needs to put that property in trust as a joint tenant, like one of her, one of our children, okay? Because if she have to dictate where the home ownership went or the home value, you can't list beneficiaries on property. So you, if there's no tie, it has to go through probate, okay? So tenancy by the entirety, form of ownership by husband and wife, certain states where it's automatically passes to the surviving spouse with right of survivorship and tenancy in common gets to, you know, dictate where their portion common. If, if I've got five owners between five siblings and one of them dies, the others without rights or survivors at 5% apiece, where they're then 25%. But since it's, since I just told you it was whomever they had dictated, it should go to maybe their will or trust. So you can get into a sit, you can have, there, there are lots of different among children just seems very easy, right? But the problem with that is it's not very fair, right? To that person's property and your children or grandchildren don't believe whoever lives the longest gets to enjoy it doesn't seem very fair so then you have a situation where and the reason it becomes challenging is because when people start to pass away the owners on a property and believe me there's in 30 different people's opinions on how it should be managed and how this or damage that it becomes uh, a little bit of so another opportunity or way that that single trustee for the benefit of you know that trust can hold the property and issues but you can have somebody in charge at the property and keeping things in line the same thing can be done with a family limited part tenancy in common to consider uh its family but in the end if you've got lots and lots of owners it can become the way it should be managed Okay, let's look at the test. So I'm going to freeze our sh screen share to our test information. Take me just a sec. Still pulling it up. It's taking a very long time. Has a hard time thinking when I've got the session going. Slow, so one second, bear with me. I'm gonna get a drink here while it's taking so long. All right, so, okay, that wasn't what I wanted. So the test, so we can review the content on the test. Okay, finally, it's pulling up now. So much delay and it got so sloppy and, I, and, and I'm a, my computer was delaying what I would write so I could mind blindly. Makes it even worse. This week's test, as I mentioned, 25 questions, two points apiece, 50 points just as a heads up. I uh, can't remember how many questions exactly, like 190, something like that. Single repeat questions like last week, this week, so not as hard. Okay, just took me to the wrong place. So I'm going to back back out again. Sorry for the delay. The questions, as long as they are. Or excuse me, I'm trying to pull it up electronically, but man, it's taken a long time because of the session. A lot of the, the memory this is an older PC that I'm using. It's amazing how far along me. This thing's probably six or seven years old. It also has to keep hundreds of those, the computer over time, video and pictures that the drive just gets completely filled with. Still thinking. Here we go, finally. Okay, true, false. And now it's frozen here, so let me see if it'll even work here. Let's scroll down, here we go. All right, so first question on the test, you want eyes and when probate does not apply. So when does the government get involved and when that, you'll be good. Make sure you understand what it means to die in test state. Make sure you understand, we, we've talked about that a couple, this is like a will, so the question on the test, and uh, we've answered that in previous weeks, uh, talking about how important it is. Understand what the intestate process includes, okay? What does the intestate process include state to state, okay? Make sure you understand, talked about it, and is it different based on what A couple weeks ago, I think about the fact that some states have money, then you're going to pay tax on it in those states. All states are subject to the federal law, law consistent across the country tax, which is not the estate tax that we've been talking about, okay? So estate tax. But then also on top of that, there might be inheritance taxes, depending on which state you live in. Okay.
So one of the things that obviously it's really the family dynamics. Okay. So if you're an estate planning attorney, how much information do you need to know about the family? Do you, do you need to know? And um, so, so one as the book is concerned, you need to know information about the, what, uh, yeah, everything you need to know about them. Yeah, where you are actually drawing, you can have a situation where you know exactly what the true, the trust planning is for the benefit of in that trust, or they might get left out. A testator is, who is a testator? What do they do? Make sure you understand what the appointment clause is. What is the appointment? Picking a trustee. Make sure you understand who a personal representative is. Talked about joint tenants in common or joint tenancies. Okay, what are the differences? Only be between married spouses. Make sure you understand which one that is. Make sure you understand what a living will is. Make sure you understand what a living will is. Make sure you understand what a credits trust. Okay, just make sure you know the basics of each of those. Your trust, charitable lead trust, and special needs trust. One of the most common charitable gifts, but then there's also a charitable lead trust or CLT, charitable remainder trust. Tenancy of the entirety. Make sure you revocable and revocable trust. Make sure you understand what a, who a trustee is. Okay, what is the function of a trustee? Who is a trustee? Trust is. What is a credible property sharing trust? It is a frivolous term. The credible property sharing trust does not exist. It's not anywhere in the book. There's a reason it's not in the book. It doesn't exist. Trustees, we do again. Uh, make sure you understand the benefits of lifetime giving. We've seen gifts that you make during your life instead of after death. Make sure you understand how a valid will in the text that goes over what is required of a valid will. Okay, another question about that. Two questions about a valid will. Make sure you understand what a codicil is. What is a codicil of modifying a will? without having to rewrite the whole thing. So there's your definition. There's your answer for the test. Make sure you understand what the old one, the previous one, and specific will or the trust that this one strikes out any, any previous of, of the will or trust. Um, is that required or not? Or not? Make sure you understand what, div you know, a lot of times it's going to be spouses and a divorce happens. Just make sure you understand what the book has to say about this week's test. 25 questions, multiple choice, true, false, and not this chapter a couple times now, preparing for the different tests or comfortable about the terminology when it comes to estate planning and what the book, uh, in essence, you'll just be in great shape because you've, where we'll wrap it up tonight. I know we're wrapping it up a little bit early, but two, and we're only covering one chapter of this entire module. Um, and we'll talk to you later.